Further on the bill before us, Representative Laviel. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Madam. Uh, we're here to make a choice today. And it's a very important choice for people who work for Sikorsky, people who might work for Sikorsky, for their suppliers, for Stratford, and for the economy of Connecticut, which is trailing behind the rest of the country in recovering and sustaining employment. Right up front, I'm going to choose yes and support the bill today, but I don't feel I can do it without a comment. As a deal, compared to other deals that other states do, this one stands up pretty well. In fact, I'm surprised to hear so many people trying to justify the deal in itself. It's a pretty good deal, and it's certainly a good deal for Sikorsky. But what I object to is not the deal itself, but the situation of having to accept it, having to support it, because Connecticut was not in an attractive enough place for this company to commit to without it. We had a very thorough briefing on the deal the other day, earlier this week, from the company, and they made it very clear that Connecticut would have to work awfully hard to make up for the differentials with other states in terms of the cost of doing business here. Now, I'm a realist. I know that states have to compete with each other sometimes to attract and retain business. And this often involves, in effect, paying them something, either outright or indirectly through incentives, to stay or to invest or to open an office. But in states that have strong economies, transactions like this one are a supplement to a solid economic development policy that makes them a destination and a home where businesses want to go and stay all the time. I'm talking about consistent tax structure. People have said this already. Consistent tax structures that make sense and apply across the board to every business. Reasonable regulations, no anti-business mandates. A functioning infrastructure that's sustained and working with businesses all the time to identify what they need and being responsive. But what about Connecticut? It's a fact that people are used to hearing the expression, I hear it all the time in this building, when there's opposition to a deal like this or to something that's going on in the economy. They say Connecticut has bad economic policies. I'd have to go farther than that. Connecticut just doesn't have a fundamental economic policy. <laughs> Do we have a strategy in place, really, for consistent, attractive tax policies, reasonable regulations, aggressive outreach, and infrastructure? No, but we do give money away to businesses from time to time. But how often do we hear around the country, great, great, we're going to hire a lot of people and open new facilities. Connecticut's right at the top of our list. No matter what your opinion on is, about, is on, on what happened last year, why GE left and all that, it's very hard not to accept that Connecticut's reputation took a very big hit in the last year. If you can't face the fact that Connecticut is not known as a welcoming haven for businesses, then you're not serving the people of Connecticut very well. Sikorsky's a great company. It's a highly specialized company. It's a company that's really, really good for Connecticut. And this important contract is very, very good for Sikorsky and Lockheed Martin. About 15 years ago, I had their major European competitor, Eurocopter, as a client. And I know at least that helicopter contracts are not a dime a dozen. We mustn't forget to congratulate the company on this important win. But congratulating ourselves and patting ourselves on the back because of this deal is inappropriate. It's like setting a building on fire and then claiming to be a hero for putting the fire out or puncturing a hole in a boat and then claiming to be a hero for bailing the water out. 
It would just be wrong to let the building burn or letting the boat sink. We can't do that. But there was an awful lot of congratulating going on upstairs earlier today. There's been a lot down here. There's a difference between attracting new businesses and having to incite the ones that are already here. Please, 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 not to go away. The state's lack of solid policies forces us to rely almost exclusively on transactions like this, and that is not something to congratulate ourselves for. This void in the economic development policy area can be fixed. We've put forward many ideas for how to do it, and it's a pity we can't start today. But that's where we should be investing our energy, not in putting out fires. Connecticut needs a full-blown, multifaceted economic development policy, once and for all. And we must show businesses, investors, and potential employees that we're serious about delivering it. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Madam.